center region of central Ohio. You get out into uh, District 7 when you get into Logan County, and then to the east, you get into District 5 when you get into Licking County, Knox County. But here, you'll be in District 6. So any kind of questions you have about the US 33 and 161 post road interchange, that's all O.District 6. And with me, I brought Jeff Bands. He's our project engineer on this project. So I'm the mouth, and he's the brains. So. <laughs> Hopefully between the two of us, you know, we'll, we'll get anybody questions answered that they have and at least get you some decent information. So the first thing I want to do is kind of highlight the five major things that you can really expect as part of this project. So this is about a $40 million project roughly, so it, and it'll span about three years, three construction seasons. So the reason it takes that long is because we do expect to not restrict traffic as much as we possibly can. Anytime you're talking about road construction, you're always going to expect some sort of traffic impact for your commute, but we will try to minimize that impact to you as much as possible. But you can expect new entrance ramps from Post Road to US 33 east and westbound both. You can also expect US 33 to be widened to three lanes in each direction over top of Post Road. And you can also expect the westbound exit to be realigned and re readjusted up to the Highland Croy Road exit. And then you can also expect the eastbound exit realigned with 161 and Eiderman Road to that roundabout. So those are the five major changes that you should expect to see throughout the life of this project. So because we are not actively in construction yet, uh, I don't have a lot of concrete dates yet to share with you as far as uh, traffic impacts that you can expect for the next three years, but I do plan to share with you what you should expect here maybe in the next three months from now until school starts. So in the next month or so, we'll start to demolish part of the US 33 bridge and traffic we will expect to maintain throughout the entirety of construction on that. So we'll actually start with the center of that bridge and we'll shove traffic out to either side on the, on the what would you call that, the exterior? Yeah. The exterior lanes on that bridge and we'll start on the middle and then for the second half, we'll push traffic back to the center and then work on those lanes that you were driving on for the first part. And then we'll also install temporary pavement along State Route 161 and Post Road and then also along those ramps. Anything you want to add? Just uh, on 33, we will be maintaining two lanes in each direction as it is right now. So the, the temporary pavement we're placing up on 33 is going to allow us to maintain what's there now. Um, so essentially, we're going to push people to the outside, maintain two lanes, cut off the middle portion, basically a lane and shoulder of the bridges inside, build inside, and then vice versa, push people to the new two lanes we just constructed. And I may have got that backwards, but Okay. Hopefully the, the folks online can hear. If not, let us know. We can go over that during the Q&A portion if they missed anything. So again, like, like Jeff said, we'll, we will always maintain two lanes in each direction on US 33. You might experience throughout the life of the project that traffic will be shifted to one area or another. That's to be expected anytime you know, we're doing any kind of demolition or road work, but we will always maintain two lanes in each direction on 33. Now, when we get to 161 and Post Road, you should expect it to be reduced to one lane in each direction when you're going under US 33, starting in about a month or so. A month to six weeks is when you should expect that that traffic impact will happen. And then I'll now turn it over to Brian Gable to kind of give you some more high-level project aesthetics information. Thanks, Brooke. <clears throat> um, so the city of Dublin was involved in the design uh, portions of the project. So wanted to go ahead and cover some of the portions of the aesthetics. So overall, the proposed landscape plan for the interchange creates a low maintenance, semi-annual mowed grassland aesthetic. Uh, this is, will be similar to the Muirfield Drive medians uh, at the Brand Road roundabout. Um, some the uh, adjacent to post roads will be some accent landscape beds. Uh, they'll be placed near to the travel lanes to provide um, some seasonal aesthetics as, as the seasons progress of spring and summer. <clears throat> uh, there's also going to be tree rows that will tie into the landscaping uh, along, along and around uh, the Ohio University campus uh, and their uh, aesthetic package as well. And then the, this design provides a diversity of plant materials and it creates a balance between trees, evergreens, woody shrubs, various large grasses and ground covers that provide a color variety and balance in landscape texture throughout all the seasons. 
So the second uh, kind of rendering here is a bit closer, um, and I wanted to emphasize some of the hardscape elements. So some of these will include uh, stone aesthetics on and around the US 33 bridge over State Route 161 slash Post Road. Um, this will also be curved bands of cobblestone pavers that will be around some of the landscape features. And those, those cobblestone pavers are actually also going to function as drainage swales for the project within some of the loop ramps on the northwest and on the southeast quadrants. Dublin's uh, standard shared use path and street lighting will be incorporated along 161 and Post Road. And lighting will also be provided under the bridge for the path and traveled way. The corridor character will be similar to the Emerald Parkway, Perimeter Drive, and Werner Temple Road corridors. So at that, I wanted to go ahead and kind of have a pause um, and discuss uh, any questions in regards to the 33 and 161 interchange project, either for ODOT or for Dublin. Um, just kind of have a maybe a 10 to 15 minute break and kind of go through some of those. One um, just to remind everybody, we do have people virtually online, so we're trying to just make sure we pass microphones around so just so everybody can hear us. So go ahead, sir. When you take Post Road 161 down to one, road, one lane in each direction for 18 months, what are you anticipating in the way of traffic delays around rush hour times? Because it's pretty delayed even with two lanes each way right now. Um, well, I'll be honest with you from a construction aspect of it, we don't really get dive into that. And we know traffic impacts are gonna happen no matter what. Um, we, that's our job is to make, make sure that they are kept to a minimum. Um, you know, obviously right now on uh, 161 Post Road, we have two lanes each direction. Unfortunately, you know, as construction, you know, we need the room to work. So we're going to have to reduce things down to one lane each direction. Um, we can't really just only take a lane during low peak travel times. We have to take it, you know, 24 seven until we get the job done. And I think the reduction is kind of concentrated underneath the bridge, right? And, and it kind of opens up pretty Correct. quickly on either Correct. side. So, um, you know, the, the biggest impact will be the turning movements a little bit, um, but um, there are some aspects of that plan that We'll have a turn lane, and then other times it's not going to have a turn lane just because of reconstruction. Right, and there are there, there are going to be some alternatives as far as suggested alternatives for getting around the the construction. Um, those will be posted, and also when we have certain portions of the job could be closed at, at portions of the time when we need to close down the road for whatever reason. If we need to, uh, during the bridge construction, we'll be closing the road down to, to set the new beams or, or to, to uh, when we demolish the bridge, we're gonna have to close the bridge uh, road down. So we will have local and um, state route detours set in place. And so a lot of those will actually be beneficial if you guys just wanna avoid the construction altogether as well. You'll typically see us do those full closure type of impacts on, on those off travel hours, off travel days. So we'll try to aim for weekends or nights to do anything like that to minimize the impact to traffic. But, you know, like Jeff said, this is the whole reason we're doing this is really to increase that easier. It's likely going to get worse before it gets better, but I promise it will get better. If you can just bear with us for three years and anytime we're going to make a major traffic impact, we communicate that with the public. Yeah, I mean, as far as the bridge demolition goes, that is planned for, um, hopefully it's gonna happen over the weekend, such that we would shut down just one direction of 161, take down the portions of each direction of 33 bridges that we need, and then come back the following night and do the other portions over the opposite direction of 161 post. So again, it would just happen over a weekend, and not during peak times during the week, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, just so, if you could back up to the rendition that had the circle. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's also printed out here on the front table if you'd like to look at it after. I forgot to mention that. But, front end. Um, no, I want to back up so I can understand oh. how is the oh, traffic, everything's gonna flow into the circle. So how does all the traffic 
continuously float? Does anybody have to stop at some point, you know, in the circle or, or to let somebody continue through? I, I'm, I'm having trouble visualizing the continuous flow of yeah. traffic. Yeah, so the roundabout you see is actually the Eiderman and Post Road roundabout. So uh, this rendering is looking a little odd because it's looking mostly to the east and a little bit to the south. So um, the roundabout in the, in the foreground of the picture is the Eiderman Road roundabout. If you look further past 33 is kind of in the middle and further past that is the Highland, Highland Croy intersection. So Highland Croy is gonna stay as a signalized intersection and then the uh, Eiderman Road roundabout is going to be, um, it's three legs right now, so there's Eiderman Road and then there's Post Road on either side. And then on the north side, the ramps are gonna connect into that. So um, it's gonna work very similar to, to standard roundabouts uh, as you approach them. Um, there are yield conditions for traffic that's within the roundabout. Um, overall, it's gonna create a better, smoother traffic flow. Um, I'll also have you notice too that some of the ramps exit prior to the roundabout itself. So some of that traffic doesn't even have to get into the roundabout, nor does it have to cross uh, other, you know, uh, eastbound post road traffic either. So um, there are some improvements that are gonna reduce the amount of traffic and the volume that's gonna go to that. So the Highland Croy and Post Road will continue to have a signal as it does now. Yep. Yeah, so Ohio University is on the, is outside the frame to the right, correct. Lindsay, do you have a question online? Yes, in the chat function, I'm getting several questions about the entrance to Post Preserve. So I think we've asked this and answered it, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask these questions so that you can reiterate. So question number one, will the entrance to Post Preserve community on Post Road be closed soon? And what are you guys doing to minimize the impact on Post Preserve entrance? So Post Preserve was something that was discussed quite a bit, <clears throat> and it was also brought up in the 2020 public meeting as well. Um, there have been some changes to that since uh, that meeting and, and during the project design. Um, Post Preserve is actually going to become a write-in, write-out permanently uh, once the project is complete. So uh, Post Preserve Boulevard will, will still have some access to Post Road. You won't be able to go from Post Preserve to the east, unfortunately, you'll have to turn in uh, to the west and you'll have to enter Post Preserve from the west as well. Um, so, or I'm sorry, from the east, you'll have to enter it from the east, heading west. Um, <clears throat> so that's after construction. During construction, there will be impacts. There will be times where Post Preserve will be limited to right in, right out. Um, and there'll be a brief period, I'm sure as well, where it will be closed while the roadway immediately in front of Post Preserve, where it connects, will be reconstructed as well. But, um, you know, ODOT and City of Dublin will communicate that and try to make sure that those impacts are minimized as much as possible. I have another question in our chat function. How will you keep Highland Croy from becoming a drag race speed strip coming straight off the freeway? So it will be signalized. Um, so people coming off the freeway for the most part are, are likely going to need to stop. Um, it's a combination area between Union County and uh, the city of Dublin. So, um, you know, we'll be monitored, speed will be tracked, and then obviously uh, there'll be another signal addition, which we'll get to in the later part of this presentation. Um, there's actually gonna be another signal added uh, as part of the Highland Glen development. So between the three signals and everything that it's, that's out there now, we believe that it'll be properly managed. And are the power lines on Post Road, Highland Croy Road being buried underground? Yeah, the... Um, Power poles along Post Road will be buried from US 33 heading to the east, uh, essentially to the post and perimeter intersection. Um, the poles on Highland Croy will continue to exist as part of the 33 project. Um, however, those are intended to be buried 
with the Highland Croy Road corridor improvements. Thank you, and I'll, those are all of the questions I have in the chat box right now, but we will revisit these again at the end of the presentation. Thanks. Can, can I have a reconfirmation of the post-preserve <clears throat> exit? I wasn't sure how you explained it. Can you just repeat it, please? You said you can only head yeah. west or east. And, and it may get a little clearer as we continue in the presentation, but, but post-preserve, what's going to happen is it'll be, uh, you'll only be able to enter post-preserve from the east heading west. So essentially from Avery Muirfield, you can turn right into post-preserve boulevard. Similarly, leaving, if you're exiting post-preserve boulevard onto post road, you'll be restricted to turn right again, so you're only heading west. So, uh, towards Highland Croy. So, um, there'll be a median in the middle that'll obviously divide uh, the eastbound, westbound traffic on post road. Uh, there are gonna be other connections that we'll get to in the second half of this presentation, so. All right. I did have one more question come in about reducing the speed for post-preserve entrance. Um, are there any plans to do that in the future, perhaps? It should be 25 at current, and I believe it's gonna remain as 25, which is uh, city standard. I, I think that's the question being asked. Thank you. Uh, this may be a little bit a little bit beyond the scope of this discussion, but with all the congestion and construction, um, the impact on Industrial Parkway and Mitchell DeWitt Road, that intersection's already <laughs> it's already very heavy, especially during rush hour. Is there any plans to upgrade that intersection to alleviate congestion around post road thirty three? Sure, I, I can try that, guys. We um, that's a, that's a Union County intersection. Actually, both both roads there are Union County roadways. Uh, we have an RFP out on the street right now to select a consultant for the um, the intersection improvement. There it could be could be a roundabout in the future um, or a signal. It's likely going to be a roundabout. We're we're going to take that through the um, design process and evaluation process. We would like to have that. Um, Construction start next year, either next year or into 24. So, kind of a stay tuned. We'll we'll uh, try to get information out there as the design process goes goes forward. All right, thank you. Do we have any more questions currently? All right. Well, we'll move on to the Highland parts of the evening. Thank you to our friends at ODOT for helping us out. All right. I've lost my mouse. Okay, sorry. All right. <clears throat> so as uh, Brooke introduced me, I'm Brian Gable. I'm the Dep Deputy Director of Engineering over Design and Construction uh, here at the City of Dublin. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our, our Highland, <laughs> as uh, Andrew called it, I like that. Uh, portion of the meeting. Um, so first we're going to talk about the Highland Croy road improvements. So overall, um, Highland Croy is a two-lane roadway existing, um, obviously just one lane northbound, one lane southbound. Um, very few turn lanes until you get to Post Road. Um, there's not much either at Park Mill. Um, so what this project is intended to do is, is kind of in coordination with the Highland Glen development and uh, also is a Dublin uh, facilitated project in coordination with Union County. Uh, Union County is our partner on this project. So uh, overall, we're gonna start with widening the roadway uh, that's existing from again, one lane in each direction to having three lanes, which will be again, still one lane in each direction, but it'll have a two way left turn lane in the middle. Um, and it'll also have turn lanes then at each of the intersections uh, as needed. So. Uh, Park Mill Drive would have one. Holbein, which will be uh, the number three, the red arrow, that's gonna be the Holbein 
entrance. That's going to be a full access left turn and right turn into Holbein. Number two is the Moreland intersection. That's going to be the new signalized intersection on Highland Croy. That's going to be the main entrance to the subdivision itself. And then number one is uh, Springview, uh, which will also be a right in, right out intersection. So if you're heading north on Highland Croy Road, uh, you'll only be able to turn right onto uh, Springview, which is again number one. And if you're exiting Springville, you'll only be able to turn right again to head north on Highland Croy Road. So uh, if you're south on Highland Croy, you'll have to enter at Moreland, which is number two here on the screen. So other improvements, uh, there'll be improvements to uh, Park Mill Drive and Highland Croy Road as well. Uh, some upgrade, uh, upgrades that signal and some addition to turn lanes. Um, there's gonna be the addition of the signal, uh, like I mentioned already at Moreland Drive. Uh, the burial of overhead utilities along Highland Croy, uh, all the way up to Park Mill. And there's going to be installation of a shared use path. Um, I apologize, you can just sort of hardly see it in this image, but <clears throat> it basically follows, uh, in the image, Highland Croy is on the top. You obviously see the houses and where everything is in the subdivision itself. And the shared use path is kind of waves through uh, the subdivision and crosses over uh, into this open space as well and heads north. And it'll connect into Park Mill Drive's shared use path there. So this will be a, a really nice extension of the shared use path uh, system that we have and it'll actually provide access pretty far to the north on Highland Croy Road. So it's not total connection all the way to the north, but it's getting there. It's a big section really add uh, of shared use path. So I'd be remiss if we didn't talk schedule. Um, overall, we are beginning design here in June of 2022. Uh, we're currently working on selecting a designer for the project. Uh, the construction project scale is tentatively, sale, sorry, not scale, sale, is tentatively slated for February of 2023. The construction progress uh, is anticipated to begin in March of 23, uh, with a significant completion in December of 2023. Um, unfortunately, just due to seeding and mulching, if any of you have ever planted seed, it doesn't take very well in December. So um, overall, the final project completion is intended for May of 24. Most of that is just going to be aesthetic related. So uh, a lot of plantings, a lot of seeding and mulching. So overall, the main portions of the project should be complete by December of 2023. Um, and at the bottom of this picture is just kind of a, a, kind of a quick view for you of what the roadway will actually look like hopefully to visualize what I mentioned earlier. One, one lane in each direction with the turn lane in the center and then the shared use path beyond the east side of the roadway. So I kind of talked over some of this already. Uh, we'll jump into the Highland Glen development. So this is a private development uh, on the parcel on the northeast corner of Highland Croy Road and Post Road, uh, south of, um, I'm sorry, south of Park Mill Drive west of Post Preserve, uh, Post Preserve subdivision. This area is <clears throat> uh, going through council uh, right now for a series of items on the development process. So um, it has its preliminary plat working towards the final plat and acceptance of that. And it's progressing into uh, the design phases with the developer. So it's gonna be 102 single family lots on 42.5 acres. Uh, it's again, located east of Highland Quarry Road, north of, north of Post. There's going to be nine new public streets. And this includes the extension of three roadways, obviously all the way out to Highland Croy, which we talked about. It will include the extension of public utilities through the area. Um, it's gonna involve coordination obviously with ODOT and with other City of Dublin Union County projects. Overall construction is anticipated um, probably, if it starts this year, it'll be late this year with just some of the underground work, um, primarily in 2023 and continuing through 24. Um, and the developer expects to begin having people uh, um, reside in the homes in early 24 and continuing then obviously uh, as they get other homes constructed. So this is again, a, a little bit of a closer rendering of the development. Um, north is to the right of the screen here. Highland Croy Road is kind of at the top, Post is at the left, and Post Preserve Boulevard is at the south or at the bottom of this page. 
<clears throat> so again, the three connections to Highland Croy Road, you have uh, Springview is the one just to the right of Post Road. The next one uh, where Highland Croy Road is label is, that one's going to be Moreland Drive. That'll be a signalized intersection. And then Holbein uh, is the third connection to Highland Croy. Uh, and it'll line up with the connections on the west of Highland Croy as well. And that's going to be a just stop sign controlled um, intersection where Highland Croy will have the right of way and the other two, Moreland, would have a stop sign, et cetera. So with that, wanted to go ahead and discuss the US 33, 161 projects, or also the Highland Glen and Highland Croy Road uh, improvements. Thank you. Do we have any comments or questions? All right. So I haven't looked at the um, plans or the long-term plans for this part of the, the city in, in quite a while, but at one time there was always a call for Highland Croy to be more of a boulevard with two lanes in each direction, you know, going up towards the park. Is that still the long-term plan or is that out the door and it's only going to be three lanes so there were multiple options that were reviewed um, and that was actually part of the traffic impact study that was provided or performed alongside this development so that was required as part of their application uh, to perform and, and review what kind of impacts to Island Croy would be made and that was the suggested alternative I believe um, our Planner over the project, Nicole Martin, I think has a few more words to say. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, or good evening rather. Uh, been a long day. Um, <laughs> I'm Nikki Martin, I'm a planner with the city's planning division. So you're absolutely correct. The community plan um, does contemplate um, roadway character improvements for Highland Croy. Um, as Brian, um, as well as others had mentioned, the majority of Highland Croy is still presently within Union County. Um, the Highland Glen development um, and the interchange, right, only considered a very small portion of Highland Croy. Um, and, and as part of that, there is not a boulevarded section proposed. Um, you know, from a city perspective, that does not necessarily preclude that from happening further north on Highland Croy in the future. Um, so we still do have that Highland Road, Highland Croy Road corridor character study as part of our community plan, um, but at this point, that is not planned or studied for implementation. So I guess you are recalling correctly. Could you flip back to the? Uh, Highland Croy Road where you had each intersection the new intersections labeled as one two and three perfect Can you go over again? What type of signal you'll have and what type of? Ingress and egress you'll have at one two and three, please sure um, so th There's a few things that play into each one, but the brief high level so starting from the left <clears throat> so you see Post Road and Highland, uh, sorry, <laughs> Highland Croy, the intersection is that main intersection. Let me see if I can get the cursor to show up. Uh, okay, so hopefully everybody virtually is able to see my cursor. So this is the Post Road and Highland Croy Road intersection. That is a signalized intersection, and that intersection is going to be uh, built with the 33161 project that ODOT is performing. So then number one is actually just north of ODOT's limited access right-of-way. <clears throat> uh, but it, you also notice that some of the improvements on Highland Croy uh, performed by ODOT are, are just not even done to that point yet. So uh, part of our agreements and what we've worked through with ODOT is for this to be a right-in, right-out only intersection. So this is Spring View. Um, I apologize if I'm saying the wrong word there, but I believe it's Spring View. Um, so if you're heading north on Highland Croy Road, you would only be able to turn right here into Springview. And again, if you came out of Springview, you would only be able to turn right to head north on Highland Croy. <clears throat> if you were heading south, you would not be able to access uh, Springview from 
uh, Highland Croy. You'd have to access it from Moreland and work your way to the south and come through that way. Um, so then number two is a signalized intersection. This is Highland Croy Road and Moreland Drive. Um, and I believe Moreland is actually just kind of this short stub here that, that goes out into the larger uh, portion of the development. Um, so that'll have left turn lanes uh, for southbound Highland Croy and it'll also involve obviously left turn and right turn lanes for Marland uh, to get on to Highland Croy. And then number three is Holbein. Number three is, uh, is not going to be signalized, but it does include uh, southbound left turn lanes into Holbein. Um, and obviously it'll have uh, turn lanes out of the subdivision to go either north or south. It is unrestricted in terms of movements um, but it uh, will be uh, stop sign controlled, I believe. Brian, while you have that um, up, could you talk a little bit more about the Highland uh, Croy and Post Road intersection, just to reiterate for those at home? Yeah, so Highland Croy and Post Road, which is on the left side of the picture here, and again, north is to the right, so this picture is turned 90 degrees clockwise. Um, what you see in this picture, uh, the left side is actually the exit ramp from 33, 33 westbound or 33 northbound, depending on your orientation of 33 in this area. Um, it's the exit ramp uh, coming off of there. And obviously post road is kind of the top and bottom of the picture here, um, headed east and west. And then Highland, Croy Road is on the north attachment to that. So Highland Croy will not have, you, you won't be able to go through uh, onto the roadway here. Um, I, is that true? Okay. <clears throat> you won't be able to get on 33 westbound from Highland Croy, right? Okay. Oh, correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so, Southbound Highland Croy will not be able to go through. Uh, they'll have to turn right onto Post Road, and there's actually a, a devoted slip ramp um, that'll allow traffic heading westbound on Post Road to head onto 33 northbound or westbound. Yeah, that's a good one. So here's. Here's the slip ramp I was talking about. So if you were coming south on Highland Croy Road, you would turn right and enter a, uh, a ramp, referred to as a slip ramp, but it's, it's a non-controlled inter interstate ramp, on-ramp, that allows you just to go on and continue and merge into 33 uh, northbound or westbound. It's northbound here, but it's actually westbound. It just throws people off. Yeah, um, so similarly, if you are coming from the east, from Highland Croy or from Post Road, to go eastbound on 33, there, there, there's one option mainly. You continue on Post Road through the Highland Croy signal, you continue west, and you would enter, you wouldn't actually go on to the Eiderman Road roundabout, you would exit Post Road and get on the uh, interstate ramp before you get to the Eiderman Road roundabout, and that'll take you through a loop ramp uh, that'll take you all the way around and on to 33 uh, eastbound or southbound in this location. Can you go back to the last slide where it was at Highland Glen 123 on the entrances? Um, I just had a question on the, the two-way left turn lane. Is that going to be completely unrestricted all the way up to Park Mill from Post Road, or will it have striping periodically? Yeah, so it'll, it'll have striping, uh, what you normally see in a two-way left turn lane. And actually, this kind of denotes it pretty well here. So <clears throat> there's a solid line, solid yellow with a dashed, and then you have kind of the two-way left turn uh, in the middle. But obviously, for the most part, currently, for the section of Highland Croy Road that's being widened, um, there are very few places to actually turn. Um, you know, it's currently a 
farmland and undeveloped. So what it's meant to do is to allow for future development and to make sure that we have plenty of space at each of the intersections to provide a left, a devoted left turn lane for the signals and then also for Holbein, which is a um, stop controlled. Lin Lindsay. Sure, just a reminder to those watching at home, you cannot unmute yourself. You will have to put your questions into the chat box at the bottom right of your screen on WebEx and I will ask the question for you. Um, I do have a question um, from someone saying, will there be right turn lanes heading north up to Park Mill Drive? I assume the question is heading north on Highland Croy Road to turn right onto Park Mill Drive. That is how I'm understanding it, okay. yes. Um, the, on Highland Croy to turn right into the new development. Will there be park, right turn lanes sorry. <laughs> heading north up to Park Mill Drive? So into the development, the First, can you put that slide up for me? I don't know how to do it, thank you. Thank you. Intersection number one will have a right turn lane, so that's the right in, right out. Intersection number two, hmm, I'm gonna have to look this up. I thought I knew it off the top of my head, um, so let me follow up with you real quick. I, I think the, the question is related to whether or not there is a devoted right turn or if it's a straight and a right co com combined, correct. <clears throat> I, I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't believe Park Mill is going to have a devoted right. I think it's a straight and a right with a devoted left. Um, but Tina will get back with us on that. So when we go ahead and field another question, we'll revisit that one. We have another one right here. I think that's what that question was, not on intersection two, but at the intersection at Park Mill and Highland Croy. So currently, for residents that turn into it, you almost get rear-ended because people are already going 40. And so having a right turn lane is, would be nice because everyone's going so fast and then you slow down to turn and pretty much get hit. All right, well, we're conferring about that. We have another question. Uh, on the uh, Park Mill intercession that crosses Highland Croy and it goes back into the Jerome Grand, well, if, if you turn left heading towards Post Road on Highland Croy, there's that road, Weldon Road, I believe is the name of it. It comes out there from the Jerome Grand also, but I know I just wondered what what will be the configuration for the traffic to enter Weldon? Uh, will will they be able to turn left because of that middle left lane there? Then also. So so you're asking if if you're heading north on Highland Croy Road to turn left yes. into Weldon. Yes. Will um, they be able to do that turn left? Yeah. So they'll they're. And again, we'll double check, but I believe there is a devoted left turn lane into Weldon from Highland Croy Road northbound. Okay, and then if you're coming out that Weldon to Highland Croy, you can turn either left or right then, right? Okay. Correct. So the okay. signal that's there now will continue, but I believe right now there's one lane in each direction uh, with no turn lanes or anything else, but um, so we are going to widen that. Tina has some of our answers here, so why don't I pass it over to her? And I think Weldon might be the one south of um, Park Mill Drive that actually aligns with uh, what will be the extension of Holby. And so that will remain a stop control intersection. Um, on the question about right turn lanes, just to kind of march up the corridor from south to north or left to right on this graphic, um, intersections one, two, and three will all have a dedicated right turn lane um, as that development comes in and the improvements that Brian describes are constructed. The Park Mill Drive intersection is not part of that development, so it would not have a dedicated right turn lane at that entrance. Tina, are there any improvements planned for the intersection of Park Mill Drive and Highland Croy Road? Yes, so there, the extension of the third lane will continue. 
um, up to Park Mill Drive and the um, left turn lane lengths will be reviewed with that project as well. Thank you. Do we have any more questions in the audience? Yeah, and just to reiterate, as Tina pointed out, Weldon connects to what is number three here, which will be Holbein. <clears throat> so I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Park Mill obviously continues through, so there's only an intersection with Park Mill and Highland Croy. Um, number three is going to be Highland Croy intersection with Holbein on the east side and Weldon on the west side. And that'll be a stop sign uh, controlled intersection. But Highland Croy Road will have devoted left turn lanes on and off of that. Brian, will the post preserve exit be closed? The Highland Glen picture showed otherwise. I'd have to see. So um, that was a relatively recent development with the project. Um, so yeah, okay, so this rendering is accurate. I had to verify to make sure. Um, so this rendering and this rendering are pretty similar. Uh, but no, Post Preserve Boulevard at Post Road um, was originally slated to be permanently closed with the ODOT project. Um, and the city of Dublin and ODOT and Union County kind of all worked together to enable Post Preserve Boulevard to remain open at the conclusion of the ODOT project. It'll obviously be impacted by the ODOT project at different times, but at the conclusion, it will be a uh, right in and a right out access only. So uh, westbound Post Road heading from Avery Muirfield will be able to turn right onto Post Preserve Boulevard. And exiting Post Preserve Boulevard, you will only be able to turn right onto Post Road, which would be westbound. I'm going to ask a similar question from another person in the chat. Hearing the changes to the Post Preserve entrance, for people of Post Preserve who want to turn left on Post Road, will likely travel through the adjoining community, Park Place, and take Park Mill Drive and thereby increase the traffic in the community. Is that correct? No. Yes and no, a little bit of both. Um, so while the development is being constructed, obviously Park Mill Drive will be a bit more uh, utilized. And that is the formal detour for the ODOT project because obviously the connections to Moreland Drive and Holbein do not exist at the current time. Um, part of the developer's goal and agreement with the city of Dublin is to have those connections made within uh, two years of entering the agreement. Um, so that will coincide with the ODOT project, but I do believe the ODOT project will probably uh, start impacting the Post Preserve Boulevard uh, roadway prior to these intersections being fully complete. Um, however, we have spoken with the developer and he is, they are trying to make their every effort to have those uh, in, uh, in as soon as they're able to in 2023. All right, we have another question. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify those, I understood those right turn lanes. So at point one, there would be a northbound lane, a southbound lane, a middle turning lane, and then a right only lane. And then the same thing at two and three. So <clears throat> there'll be no, there'll be essentially a um, striped, median at that location. Um, so there will be no left turn from southbound Highland Croy onto number one, which is Springview. So, so the item, yeah, so number one here is restricted to only a, essentially you can only, when you're going northbound in Highland Croy, you can only turn right. Southbound Highland Croy will not be able to turn left into number one. So there, that's three, essentially three lanes. At two, just, just please use the microphone. Okay. So everybody at online. At two, that's four lanes because that would be a southbound, a northbound, a turn, and a right. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. At three, 
that would be four lanes. A southbound Highland, a northbound Highland, the middle turn, and then a designated right. So, but there's no designated right to go into Park Mill. Oh, there's a designated right turn, Tina, at number three? She said number three is correct. Okay. Okay. But, but that stop sign at three, if I wanted to go southbound on Highland Croy, I would go pat I would turn left across a designated right, the northbound Highland Croy, the turning lane into three to get onto my southbound Highland Croy. I believe that is correct. So yeah, you would, you would cross essentially the designated right turn, the northbound Highland Croy, and then the dedicated left turn into Holbein to get onto the southbound. Yeah, and part of this is mainly to um, try to guide traffic to utilizing the signals that want to go southbound onto Highland Croy, um, that should, which would be either number two or to Park Mill Drive itself. I have a question about the Highland Glen development. Are you maintaining the buffering between, there's a lot of mature trees between um, the post-preserve development and the new Highland Glen, I guess is what you're calling it. What's the buffering going to be between those two developments? Are you keeping those mature trees? And can you explain? I will let Nicole handle this question. You know, <laughs> trying to switch it up. Um, are you talking about the um, the northern bound of the development or the east bound of the development? I, I think it's between the new development and the old. Okay. East. Okay. Um, so I guess, you know, having been farmland, there there is there are some trees through there most of it is scrub and underbrush so all of that will be cleared out trees that um, are over six inches in size and are in good or fair condition so basically meaning that they're healthy those um, are what we call protected trees so every effort um, has been made to retain those um, one of the largest trees I will tell you is at the intersection of number one with the post preserve neighborhood. So that tree will come out um, in order to facilitate that roadway extension. All of the lots that abut um, both post preserve um, and park place have a tree preservation zone and a no disturb zone in the rear of them. So that is a platted restriction. Additionally, um, and you may all be familiar with this, but every lot has what's called a rear yard setback. The rear yard setbacks for the lots that abut those existing neighborhoods match the existing neighborhoods. Um, and that was intentional in order to ensure development was compatible. So I think the, the long story is that to the greatest extent possible, but you will notice quite a bit of clearing. So the applicant is required to do tree replacements. We typically don't have tree replacements on single family lots. So you're gonna see the majority of those tree replacements um, in the extension of the ML Red Treeview Nature Preserve, so that park that runs through the center there. Um, and then you'll also see some additional tree replacements in um, Reserve A, which is where the historic farmstead is located, so that existing agricultural barn will remain. And then back to um, the gentleman's question about the Highland Croy roadway character. Part of the community plan that is being implemented with this development is that um, 100 to 200 foot setback that has that variable agricultural character with shared use paths. So you'll see all of that. Um, but I don't anticipate a lot of tree replacements on single family lots. Um, 
they will meet all the other single family requirements like front yard trees. Yes. Hold on one sec. So about the uh, abutments in the back, but as you come through number two and you come around Stillhouse Lane, you know, right there, so there's a house right there in the cul-de-sac at the very end of Stillhouse Lane, and that'll be a side. Will those trees along there be preserved as well? You talked about in the back. For yeah, those. so those trees will likely be removed. Um, the That lot was discussed specifically as part of the development process, and because it is a side, it has a larger side yard setback than any other lot in this neighborhood, and so it has um, a... 10 foot side yard setback, which matches what is happening um, in post preserve. There are a lot of P's happening here <laughs> um, in post preserve. Um, but because a house is going to go on that lot, I would anticipate that in that 10 feet, you're not going to see a lot of um, tree preservation. And like I mentioned, it's mostly underbrush. Um, so while that does grow green during the warm months, um, there aren't actually a lot of trees in there. Um, and I'm happy to provide you the tree survey if that would be helpful for you to look at. Yeah, another question then, that particular home also has a uh, irrigation system. Will you make sure that that irrigation system is protected from the construction on that, you know, from the developer? Yeah. So So I guess I would assume the irrigation system's actually on the property. Yes. So if that's the case, then no, the developer won't be getting on other people's property to do any work. So without approval to do that. So now if the irrigation system's not on the owner's property and is located on somebody else's property, then I would say it's kind of fair game <laughs> if it's on the developer's property. Okay, so. I just want to make sure because the irrigation system is very close to those trees that run along the side of that property. Right, but as long as that irrigation system's on the east side of that tree lawn, I don't think they're tree line they're going to be getting into it at all. So, okay. but when the developers also start to develop, and usually they'll put some type of um, protection against runoff and stuff like that, I'm assuming. Yeah, there'll be uh, erosion and sedimentation control devices all through the development during construction, but I will also say that that's not 100% capture, so there will be some bypass during construction. I just I want to warn the neighborhood of that because that's a, a chronic concern that we get. When we get heavy rainfalls like we had this last February, I, I can assure you there's going to be some silt that's, that's going to lead the site. Because it's, that particular property, when it rains hard, that particular house has the sump pump runs contiguously because of drainage from that field on the other side of that fence. So yeah. that, you know, that has to be address somehow. Yeah, Highland Glen's gonna have its own stormwater management system apart from anything in post preserve. Okay. So, and that's, that's actually a critical part of the design to make sure that they keep all their stormwater basically on their site and manage it on their site. So they're not even, even though there's a, there's a storm sewer system along the west side of um, post preserve, they're not going to utilize that system at all. They're putting in their own rear yard system okay. uh, for the lots on the east side of the development. So one, one last question. Also, when Schottenstein looked at that properties, there were a lot of discussion on the quality of the homes. Um, so when this new developer comes through, are we still going to hold them to the same high standard as Schottenstein in regards to our property values over in Post Preserve? I mean, because that's, that's really significant in terms of the lot size, property construction, um, and the type of homes there. Yeah, so um, as part of this development plan, City Council reviewed and approved the lot sizes that are being depicted, um, and then also zoning standards that go with those lot sizes. So we already talked about it a little bit, but the lot sizes adjacent to those single family neighborhoods match um, lot for lot in terms of the width and um, are equally deep. And the intent there is to preserve that existing character and those property values. Those larger lots that are adjacent to existing development will accommodate larger homes. You'll notice in the, I'll call them pods, that are interior to the site, those lots are significantly smaller. 
Um, that is in keeping with the community plan that looks to have development kind of transition as you get closer to Highland Croy and that interchange, because as we kind of all know, it's, it's gonna be a different character than you experience in your existing neighborhood. Um, in terms of character and quality, of course, all of those things were considered um, in, in detail by city council as well as planning and zoning commission. Um, the developer is you know, required to use um, cementitious siding rather than a vinyl siding product. Um, also to include masonry, whether that be brick or um, cultured stone. Um, you'll also see architectural features um, like decorative garage doors. Um, and in some cases, there are opportunities for shutters and other, um, other items of interest. So I would anticipate that this would um, you know, be of a consistent quality and character, particularly those lots that are adjacent. The lots that are closer to Highland Croy, I think that's gonna be slightly different um, and that's intentional. So one last question. There's a walking path. If you go north and the third uh, entrance um, that you come in, there's a walking path behind, I'm not sure what street that is, on the other side of the pond. Will that walking path be connected to that new development walking path? Yeah, so as, as part of the development plan, the applicant or developer rather, <clears throat> provided a pedestrian and bicycle circulation plan. And so all of the paths and sidewalks that are existing in the neighborhood, um, as well as the open spaces, all of those are going to be extended. So if it's an asphalt path, it'll be extended as asphalt. If it's a concrete sidewalk, it'll be extended as a concrete sidewalk. So all of those connection points, um, that'll get you all the way out to Highland Croy. There'll be a um, a shared use path, so an asphalt path along Highland Croy, and you'll be able to take that all the way to Glacier Ridge Metro Park. All right, another question. So just to follow up on the right in, right out at the, the first intersection labeled as number one, if, how is it contemplated that the property on the west side of Highland Croy, how will it access Highland Croy, if number one is right in, right out. So the property on the west side <clears throat> is obviously undeveloped right now. It's uh, mainly wooded, I believe. So uh, what will occur with that? And, and I believe it's also zoned Union County. Yeah. So I can. Let me try to speak to this. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So the property on the west. All of the property on the west side of Highland Croy is currently not within the city of Dublin um, and is located within um, Jerome, Ta Jerome Township Union County jurisdiction. Um, as such, um, should development come forward, we would likely anticipate that it not come forward as part of a city application um, and would go through um, that township and county process. Um, I know that you know, in a, the most preliminary sense, there have been conversations with various developers over time about um, developing that property. Um, there, at this point in time, is no layout or final development that um, has been shared with the city, and I don't believe the county has one either. I don't know if you guys want to speak to that, but um, I think if you guys want to speak to access, there would be some sort of consolidated access. Yeah, there's really no update um, or anything to add from what Nikki said. We have not gotten any recent applications for any development on that. Uh, I believe it's the Hawkins, the southwest corner. Um, no, uh, no development proposals on that piece uh, of late. I have two quick questions. Nikki, um, this one might be for you. The the two new ponds in the Highland Glen um, subdivision and that walking path, is that all going to be one continuous, um, is that, are you gonna mow down the, the uh, trees that are currently, you know, kind of to the, I, I guess, uh, east at the post-preserve pond? Is that all gonna kind of be one 
you know, sight line? That's my first question. And secondly, are you restricting construction traffic on Stillhouse and Springview? Because those are very, very narrow streets. So I'll speak to the first one, um, and perhaps someone else can speak to construction maintenance of traffic. Um, and so in terms of that um, open space is the extension of ML Red Trabio, um, which takes you right all the way um, really to Avery Muirfield. And so that will become one open space to the greatest extent possible, we're preserving trees. The area will be a combination of naturalized landscaping as well as manicured landscaping. So there will be some mowed turf or grass, but also many of the mature trees that you see through there will be retained because you have that stream corridor there which protects them inherently. And then regarding traffic and construction. Yeah. So. Our practice is on existing residential streets to post them no construction traffic uh, to prevent um, you know those subdivision construction vehicles from using post preserved boulevards, Springview, Stillhouse Lane, Holbein to access the construction site. That's not to say that we're not going to get some violators to that, but we during construction will work with our uh, police department to actually patrol that and make sure that there's compliance. Uh, with those those signs. So the construction access would be off of Highland Croy Road. They would create construction entrances uh, to the new development uh, to, to start building the public improvements. All right, I see, do we have any comments online? All right. Uh, yes, from one of our online attendees, Brian. Highland Croy signal was told two years back that it was a temporary solution, but now it is becoming permanent. Can you talk through why that changed, please? Or Jeannie, my <laughs> thanks. I assume it's in regards to Highland Croy and Moreland Drive signal? No, she's talking about Highland Croy and Post Road. Oh. Yeah. So good evening, my name is Jeannie Willis. I'm the Deputy Director of Transportation and Mobility for the City of Dublin. Thank you for the question. And yes, you are correct that several years ago when the signal was installed at Highland Croy and Post Road, it was thought to be a temporary solution at that time because we did believe that we would be installing a roundabout at Highland Croy and Post Road. When we revisited the interchange design over the past two years, conversations with our partners at ODOT um, started to talk about what was the best and most appropriate form of traffic control for that intersection. And it was ultimately determined that a signal would be in the um, public roadways best interest long term. That's not to say that there won't be improvements. There will be additional turn lanes um, on Post Road and on Highland Croy, and the mast arms will be replaced so that there is one in all four quadrants of the intersection. Thank you. Another question, will the pond at the post preserve entrance be affected? <clears throat> I, I'm assuming you're talking about the east side of post preserve Boulevard. Uh, overall, the construction projects are not in tension are not intended to impact that uh, pond. Um, our limits do come up adjacent to it, but uh, do not, um, will not actually impact that pond directly. So, no. I had a question in regards to the setbacks of Highland Glen and how those are comparable to Park Place, Bishop's Run, Bishop's Crossing. So that was my first. And then my second is, as Highland Glen's open space connects with post preserves, and so really these residents would be um, adding more capacity to that playground at post preserve. Has there been talk with the city to look at the need to revamp that playground or add pavilion space with Highland Glen and Autumn Rose now utilizing that there's just more 
kids, more participants. Okay, I'm gonna read you the setbacks because I don't have it all committed to memory. Um, so like I'd mentioned, there's two different characters, right? There are the perimeter lots and the interior lots. Um, in terms of setbacks, um, well, oh, okay, that's easy. Um, <laughs> Just to reiterate for those online, the clarification was the setback off of Highland Croy. Yes, so not the not the developable lots and their setback. So um, the setback along Highland Croy is 100 feet. Um, this is a variable setback and comes out of the community plan, um, which speaks to the Highland Croy roadway character. Um, and so it varies along Highland Croy. So to, immediately to the north um, is a 200 foot setback. Immediately to the north of that in Autumn Rose Woods is 150 feet. Immediately to the north of that in Bishops is 200 feet. And so the reason you have a variable setback is to emulate a rural roadway and not to um, give the appearance of a master planned community. Um, and so you see kind of consistent landscape treatments of clustered trees versus, um, you know, a street tree or a boulevard character. Um, and so that is um, how we how we got to that. And, and Nikki, I don't know if you want to talk briefly on Reserve A and, and kind of all the uh, items up in the front of this subdivision. Yes. So um, in regards to any public open spaces existing in any of the adjacent neighborhoods, I'm not able to speak to those. Um, the scope of this development is within that 42 acres. If at some point it were to be determined that the existing park facilities are not serving the community as intended, um, I'm sure that's something that the city would look into at that time um, and identify when that would be appropriate to be programmed um, for improvement. Um, in terms of these open spaces, the priority here was to, again, maintain the rural roadway character and so rather than having um, an active um, open space, it, the priority was to preserve historic structures. Um, and those are going to be preserved in Reserve A um, and will, as really not only this development, but as a gateway to Dublin, um, will allow for walking paths, um, but will not include play structures. Nikki, someone would like to know, how can we find out more about the Highland Glen subdivision regarding real estate and purchasing a plot? Thanks. <laughs> um, in terms of, um, you know, future development, uh, the developer is Virginia Homes. Um, at this point, they are not doing pre-sales um, and they have not um, begun to market these uh, lots for sale. Um, the underground infrastructure as well as public roadways, um, which will need to be conditionally accepted by the city prior to the developer being able to pull building permits and build homes. Um, is likely a year off, um, plus or minus. And, uh, and so subsequent to that, they, they would be able to begin marketing that. Um. Thank you. Oh, two more questions, a little scary. So I was at a post uh, preserve community association meeting the other day, and they were talking about the interest in the post preserve 
is pretty much maintained by our community association dues. And then down the street, uh, I can't remember that neighborhood, um, they said the, the Park Place and Bishop, yeah, they said that the city of Dublin maintained the egress. So will Highland Glen, will this development maintain that uh, egress off the road or will that be the community association? Because what they said is they said that our uh, interest into there looked a lot better and was better preserved than that was um, the city was doing at their interest off of, um, uh, I can't remember the road. Uh, so who's, who's gonna maintain the beautification of that off the Highland Road, the uh, egress off there? Because if you wanna maintain the beautification of Dublin, somebody has to maintain that. So who's gonna do this? Community Association, the city of Dublin? Mm -hmm. The way that this works um, is that um, an open space plan was approved, um, identifying ownership and maintenance of all of these open spaces. So the city owns all of the open space reserves. That's fairly consistent across all open spaces within the city of Dublin. Um, that affords our homeowners associations the luxury of not having to pay property tax on those areas. Um, additionally, in this neighborhood specifically, these open spaces um, will be maintained um, by the homeowners association, including the frontage. The city of Dublin will be maintaining and programming reserve A, so where that historic structure is located. Um, and then the city of Dublin will also be maintaining all of the shared use path systems um, as it has a regional um, benefit. Um, and the city will also be maintaining, which I know is very important both to new residents and existing residents, the stormwater functionality of all the basins that are located within these reserves. Thank you. My question was on those reserve areas as well at the entrance to post preserve, the homeowners association maintains that pond. So even though the city owns it, we maintain that one. But I think what that gentleman was saying was the one at the park place entrance is owned and maintained by the city. And so trying to see where the consistency is, because I think between park place and post preserve, there's like 13 ponds and it's inconsistent on which ones the city obviously owns all of them, but it's inconsistent on which ones we have to maintain versus which one's the city. If the city is maintaining the storm one in reserve A and to make it uniform, it probably would make sense to look at that maintenance piece if the city should take over the maintenance piece at post preserve entrance so that it is more consistent. So I won't get into a long explanation about pond, stormwater pond or basin maintenance, but this was an issue that both the Community Services Advisory Commission and City Council took up um, about a year ago uh, because there is a difference in terms of maintenance responsibility throughout the community. And there has been a shift uh, over the last several years in practice where the city, who we feel is really best suited to maintain stormwater management basins, is doing that in newer developments. Yes, there are numerous uh, basins throughout the community that the city of Dublin owns the property or the reserve area, but the HOA is maintaining that basin. And that, that practice is going to continue. Uh, city Council decided not to change that. Um, so you know, that is not gonna change with this development or, or future developments. Um, I will advertise though that we do have a pilot program out right now of grant funds available to HOAs for basin maintenance. Uh, that they can apply for and um, assist with the maintenance of the basin itself. And again, that's the, the stormwater function of the basin, not the aesthetic components of the basin. Mm -hmm. Just to dovetail um, into what Mr. Hammersmith had shared, in terms of neighborhood beautification and maintaining your frontages and your entrances, 
the city of Dublin, administered by the planning division and supported by city council, has a Beautify Your Neighborhood grant program. Um, this is a, ma a matching grant program. Um, we highly encourage neighborhoods, particularly established neighborhoods, and I know some neighborhoods, including um, Park Place, have taken advantage of this in, um, in past years um, to, to maintain your entry features and frontages over time. Um, if you've not considered that, I would, I would really encourage you to do so. Thank you, Nikki. And uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the Highland Croy Post Road intersection. Specifically, will there be a dedicated right turn lane at the intersection for coming south on Highland and turning right onto Post Road? If so, what is the length of this dedicated right lane turn? Currently, it is woefully short, causing huge backups on Highland Croy South. Yeah, I believe there is a double dedicated right turn lane from southbound Highland Croy Road onto Post Road. <clears throat> the turn lane will be extended. Uh, it's kind of best identified in this uh, diagram here. Um, several hundred feet. Uh, I believe it's roughly four to five hundred feet back uh, to the north. Um, so there'll be ample space for traffic uh, heading southbound on Highland Croy to be able to turn right either onto Post Road and head on to 33 or to be able to just to turn right to head on to Post Road to continue uh, to the west. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions here in the room? Seeing none, we'll check online. Yes, when the parcels get developed on the west side of Highland Croy, will the access points be required to line up with those being shown on the east side? Will they have the same movements allowed at each point? So uh, that's talking on quite hypothetical, but uh, we'll, we'll let the Union County engineer kind of handle that question. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Yes, it'd be our intention, um, and we always do traffic studies uh, when proposed development is um, comes before us, but we would intend to, to keep those access points uh, lined up for obvious reasons that it helps with the safety and the, the flow of traffic. As far as the, the turning movements allowed uh, or not permitted, it would depend on the, um, the impact of the traffic and, and expected traffic volumes. So. A couple follow-up questions for the development, Nikki. I think you might have already mentioned this, but is there any park in place in Highland Glen? And then a separate question uh, regarding the tree replacement and ML Red Treebu, will those be native trees? Yeah, great question. So um, the 42-acre development of Highland Glen includes uh, about 12.4 acres of open space. Um, so as we've previously discussed, that is distributed um, across, you know, the extension of ML Red Treebu, um, the Highland Croy Road frontage, as well as Reserve A. Um, those areas also, as we mentioned, will include tree replacements. Um, those will be native species, um, as well as species that are um, successful in our region um, and are um, obviously not undesirable or invasive. So, um, you know, we do have an exceptional city forester as well as landscape zoning inspection staff and planning and coordinate closely with all of our developers um, regarding tree replacements. Nikki, um, do we know yet, is the new development going to be a new HOA? This will be an HOA that is independent of all existing surrounding neighborhoods. Um, it will be forced and funded um, so that they can um, maintain their open spaces um, and all other commitments over time. Thank you. And was pedestrian traffic included in the traffic study? Pedestrian traffic crossing Highland Croy at Park Mill has greatly increased. 
I think maybe Nikki has answered that question a little bit um, as far as extending these the path network through this neighborhood and also along the Highland Croy frontage. So there will be pedestrian and bicycle access um, through this corridor and also um, as the intersections in, are improved along Highland Croy Road, there will be opportunities for pedestrian crossings at those locations as well. Thank you, and at this point we have five minutes left. I wanted to ask Brian to go ahead and put the contact page up for everyone. So if you have a question that you didn't get a chance to ask this evening or something that I inadvertently missed in the chat box, um, please go ahead and take note of that to contact information and reach out to the people you see there on the screen. And uh, I just wanna uh, give a special thanks to everyone online for asking so many questions tonight throughout the chat feature. Thank you. I also wanted to give Brooke a chance to mention ODOT's uh, traffic advisories. Uh, thanks again for inviting ODOT to be your guest tonight. We really appreciate the opportunity to provide some updates on the ODOT portion of this project, understanding that not all of this, you know, has ODOT involved, but the post road interchange certainly will have a lot of ODOT involvement. Uh, so you can actually sign up for weekly updates for Union County, Franklin County, whatever is prevalent to you by visiting our website. Our website is just transportation.ohio.gov. So it's that first part of the link that you see there on your screen. The second part of the link that you see on your screen actually takes you right to this project page. We will update that project page periodically as this construction progresses. But if you want to see weekly traffic impacts that will impact your commute right to your inbox, if you just go to transportation.ohio.gov, scroll all the way down to the bottom, input your email, and then you can customize your subscription that way. You can subscribe to multiple locations. If you find yourself driving downtown every day, that might be a good update for you to have as well. You can do all of that on our website again. We also have uh, an app if you are a smartphone user. It works for iPhones and Androids, and it's OGO, O-H-G-O, and you can download that customize your route right there in the app. It will actually send you notifications if there is any kind of construction or crashes that are going to impact your commute. It will send you all of that information right to your phone. It also works as a website if you're not a smartphone user and that would just be ohgo.com. Works exactly the same as the app. Again, you can personalize your route, get traffic impacts that way, and that's for all ODOT roadways, all ODOT projects. Thanks again. I like to watch the traffic cameras on the OGO app. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll go ahead and adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for attending both in person and virtually. <laughs>